These recipes may be low ingredient and low cost, but I promise you they're big on flavor. Welcome to Meals with Maria. Today I have a compilation of some absolutely fabulous low ingredient dinners. And low ingredient often means less expensive. You're buying less things, you're putting less things, and it's super easy. You're not gonna be ordering takeout because your recipe was too complicated. It's almost impossible to screw these up. They're full of flavor and you're gonna love them. We're gonna make this whole meal in just 30 minutes with absolutely no chopping or sauce making. I love it. So you just wanna start by covering your sheet pan. We're gonna make everything even easier. Grab a big sheet pan and either do tin foil or I'm just going to crumple up some parchment paper and put that on there so that it stays flat. That is kind of the secret to the parchment paper so it doesn't fly away on you. I have six boneless skinless chicken thighs. These do end up being a little bit more expensive than your bone-in skin on. So if you do have those, you can take the extra time to take the bone and skin out. But if you're being lazy trying to make things quick and you are impatient, go ahead and just buy them like that. Same thing with these potatoes. They would be great if they were diced up potatoes and they're a little bit more expensive to buy the little ones but the little ones will cook really quickly and you don't have to do any extra work. And we also have some cherry tomatoes here and we're just gonna place those on that sheet pan, drizzle it with olive oil, and then you can use your favorite seasoning blend. I'm actually gonna use Auntie Nono's. You just wanna cook this at 425 degrees for 20 minutes. And then we're gonna put a pound of green beans over the top. You can buy these in a bag already cleaned, washed, and trimmed, and it's super easy. And then we're gonna place this, you know, make sure to move everything around so you wanna make sure that it gets in the oil and in the seasoning. And then place this back in the oven for another 10 minutes. After that 10 minutes, your meal is done. Everything is gonna be cooked through. Your green beans are gonna be so perfectly cooked. And then I'm just gonna take some store-bought pesto and put that kind of drizzle that over the top. If you have like a drizzling bottle, it's gonna be even better than like the spoon that I'm using. And squeeze a squeeze of lemon if you have it and some fresh parsley if you have it. And wow, that is gonna be absolutely delicious. And like I said, it's so, so fast. There's so little hands-on time with this that it really is amazing and amazing amazing weeknight meal. You're gonna to wanna to use baby red potatoes if you can get your hands on them, but if not, you can just use regular potatoes. You're just gonna cut them into uh, smaller pieces. As far as the baby reds go, you just wanna slice them into halves or quarters if they're really big. All the potatoes should be roughly similar in size, so even if you are cutting bigger potatoes, you wanna make sure that the pieces are similar. You wanna place all of the potatoes in a rimmed baking sheet. And then I'm just gonna make up a quick seasoning blend with about a teaspoon of seasoning salt, a half a teaspoon of thyme, a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, and a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. Drizzle your potatoes in olive oil or whatever oil you have, and then sprinkle on the seasoning. Make sure that each potato is evenly coated in the seasonings, and then you're gonna arrange the potatoes in the pan so that they're cut side down. Try as much as you can to make sure the potatoes are not cut touching each other, because if they touch each other, I guess they'll steam versus roast. Bake these at 400 degrees for about 30 minutes, and then you're gonna take the pan out and flip the potatoes over and drizzle them with white wine vinegar. This is so important. This is the key to this recipe. This is what makes it taste so good. It's this one simple ingredient. And I feel like this is kind of like along the lines of putting like a malt vinegar on your french fries, but wowza, so worth it. You wanna then bake these for another 15 to 20 minutes until they are just all crispy and roasted. And I'm telling you, you are going to love the flavor of that vinegar on the potatoes. It's not too much, it's not too little. You're actually gonna not even really know what made them so good, but it is the vinegar. And this recipe is so fabulous, so amazing, and definitely a great thing to make for a dinner party or just to surprise your family. For this next one, we're making creamy chicken enchiladas. And I've heard of this method of making enchiladas before, but this was the first time I got to try it for myself. So it was very exciting and very delicious. We are gonna end up using two cans of cream of chicken soup today, but I'm gonna just start off by making one mixture and then make another one on the side. So I'm gonna use one can to start with a half a cup of milk. And then to that, I'm gonna add about three cups of shredded chicken. I just took some chicken breasts, I cooked them up in the Instant Pot and shredded them with my hand mixer. I'll make sure to put the recipe for that down in the description box for you because it is so easy and this chicken turned out so delicious. And then you also wanna add a couple of cups of shredded cheddar cheese and mix that well 
And those ingredients are all it takes to make a delicious chicken enchilada mixture that you're gonna use as your filling for your chicken enchiladas. And it is really fantastic. You're gonna be shocked and amazed at how good it is for how few ingredients it is. And then for the topping for your enchiladas, you may wanna make the same sauce again. So we're gonna use another half a cup of milk and one can of cream of chicken soup. And we're actually gonna pour that over top of our enchiladas. I think another option, if you don't have another cream of chicken or you don't wanna go this route, is to actually just do the filling with the cream of chicken and then pour some enchilada sauce over the top of them. And I think that would be delicious as well. And then I am gonna make pretty big enchiladas today. So I'm using an 11 by 17 pan and just spraying that down and then covering some large tortillas with the filling and rolling those up and just putting those in the bottom of the pan. Now, alternatively, you can make about half this recipe and just use one can of cream of chicken and milk and then just take half of that sauce and use about a cup and a half to two cups of chicken and one cup of cheddar cheese, you know, basically cut everything in half and use a little bit smaller tortillas and use a nine by 13 and then just pour the rest of the sauce over the top of it. So that just cuts down your sauce in half, everything in half. And that's kind of a more reasonable size. We did end up with a ton of enchiladas, but it was great for us because we had lots of leftovers for the week. So you can kind of choose your method and how much you want to make and how much you want to use. Then you just want to pour the sauce over the enchiladas, make sure that they are nice and covered and cover that with another cup to two cups of shredded cheddar. And you're gonna bake this at 350 degrees for about 30 minutes until it's bubbly and brown and you will know when it's ready because it looks so delicious and it smells so delicious. This next recipe is for a Hawaiian crock pot chicken. Again, three ingredients. We have crushed pineapple, just one full can of crushed pineapple all over the top of chicken breasts. And I think that boneless, skinless thighs would be just great here as well. And then we're gonna do about half a container of barbecue sauce. Whatever your favorite barbecue sauce is, whatever you have in your cabinet or is on sale will do. And then you wanna cook this either on high for a couple of hours or low for four hours. I mean, Again, this depends on your crock pot, but for me, my experience with cooking chicken is you do not want to overcook it in the crock pot. And my crock pot cooks hot, so even on low, I do not want to cook it more than four hours because I think it will come out really, really dry. This ended up being delicious. I loved all the sauce and all the flavor that you get from that pineapple and the barbecue sauce, and it just couldn't get any easier. This next recipe is for what is called camping dinner chicken quesadilla because, hey, it's easy to take canned chicken breast camping with you. So if you are going camping, this is a great idea. But it's also a great idea if you're just hanging around your house and you don't know what to make and you have a can of chicken. So to make this, you just want one larger can of chicken and about a half an onion diced up and about two cups of shredded either cheddar or I think I actually use Colby Jack cheese. I love Colby Jack cheese in a quesadilla. That's just a personal opinion. And then I apologize, this is just a weird jar of salsa, so it's got a strange top going on here, but you wanna add one jar of your favorite salsa. We love the Chi Chi's Mild just because the kids really like it and it's a simple flavor that's not super spicy. Yeah, just mix all that together. I've never really done a quesadilla like this where you mix everything together, but I love this idea because then you get everything in every bite and you don't have like layers of stuff. It's super, super simple. So I'm just putting a little bit of butter in the bottom of my pan. That's how I like to make a quesadilla. You can use your favorite tortilla, whatever you, whatever size you want to use, whatever type you want to use. And then go ahead and add just, you know, a quarter to a third of the mixture, depending on how much you want to put in there and how many quesadillas you want to make. And this is super delicious. You wanna cook this on a medium low heat. I like to cook it low and slow kind of thing because I don't like to burn it. And you wanna give it plenty of time so that your cheese can melt and then flip it once it gets crispy on one side and do the same thing with the other side. These were so delicious and such a great recipe to make in a bind. You can really elevate what may have been on a different day, just a plain cheese quesadilla and turn it into a full on chicken quesadilla, restaurant quality, delicious meal. Now, if you're absolutely loving these recipes, I did make a free PDF down in the description box for you so that you can get all of them. You can print them out, you can give them to a friend, you can do whatever you want with it. I made it just for you so that you have everything you need all in one place. 
this recipe is simply named poor man's meal. It is as easy as it gets and it is super delicious. You wanna start with one pound of ground beef or ground turkey, whatever you have. You can see my manager special sticker on mine. So I got mine on sale, popped that in my freezer and I was ready to go. Season your beef with salt, and then I'm using a Trader Joe's seasoning blend, but you can use whatever your favorite seasonal salt is. When the meat is cooked through thoroughly, remove it from the heat and set it aside in a separate dish. And then I'm gonna use the same pan and add a few tablespoons of oil, whatever oil that you have on hand will do. And we are gonna add in, it says seven cups of frozen hash brown potatoes, but I had maybe like two cups of them in my freezer and we were gonna go real poor man style. So I decided we would just use what we had and just cut down on the potatoes. And I think it would be plenty of food for us anyway. So I just used the rest of what I had. You wanna cook these until the potatoes are light and crispy, turning them halfway through for about 10 minutes so you can see they're getting that golden brown color on them. Once the potatoes are fully cooked to your liking, you can sprinkle a little more salt and pepper on if you'd like. Add your ground beef back to your skillet as well as one drained can of corn. And that is the basis for this meal. We're gonna saute this for a couple of minutes to make sure everything is warmed all the way through. And I topped mine with a little bit of shredded mozzarella cheese because that's what I had in my refrigerator. But you can use any type of cheese that you like or that you have. The recipe actually recommends cheddar. So if you have that, go ahead and use that. But the cheese on top really makes it extra special. And then I happen to have some scallions. So I cut those up and put those on there too. I think that if you had like a fresh onion when you first started cooking that beef, it would taste really good in the skillet as well. So you can see that working with what you have, those potatoes that I had only a couple of cups still makes this a delicious and hearty meal. This was plenty, plenty for our family. We were so pleased. The kids loved it. Not that we even needed it, but I served it with some frozen peas and some Texas toast. And this was absolutely fabulous. This next dish is a chicken and lemon broccoli alfredo and cut up about three cups of fresh broccoli florets or go ahead and use some frozen broccoli. You can either cook that on the stove or microwave it and then we'll throw it in when the time is right. You'll need two boneless skinless chicken breasts or you could definitely use boneless skinless chicken thighs in this and canned chicken is also an option. The initial recipe actually has you use four boneless skinless chicken breast halves and to leave them like that. And then you would eat the chicken and the broccoli alfredo as it is with no side or anything like that. I had some pasta on hand and pasta is also a great way to just add some starch and that way you can kind of cut down on the amount of protein you need. So I'm actually just gonna cut my chicken into about half inch chunks and cook it like that instead so that it will work really well within the pasta and I can mix everything together. You wanna heat about a tablespoon of oil in a hot pan and then put eight ounces of mushrooms within that pan. I got the already sliced ones or you can just get some whole ones and slice those up. Add your chicken and saute for about four minutes, turning the chicken about halfway through. You can use the lemon juice just from the Dollar Tree or from like a big container, or you, if you have a fresh lemon, go ahead and zest about two teaspoons of lemon peel, and then you wanna slice your lemon. Like I said, if you don't have a fresh lemon, lemon juice is gonna be absolutely fine as well. After the mushroom and chicken have been cooking for four minutes, add in your three cups of broccoli florets and the lemon slices, and then cover and cook for eight minutes or until the chicken is done. You wanna make sure that it's 170 degrees on an instant read thermometer. Off to the side, I did cook and drain my pasta according to the package instructions. If you're making this with a pasta, you can pour it right into the container that the pasta is in. If you're making it with no pasta, you can actually just set the chicken and vegetables on plates aside. And then for Alfredo, you just wanna use your favorite store-bought Alfredo sauce. I have seen Alfredo sauce at the Dollar Tree for as low as $1.25. So that is an option. I happen to grab this one at my local grocery store. And then you just wanna add either a couple teaspoons of lemon juice or what I'm adding is the two teaspoons of lemon zest. You just wanna heat this through and then you can either pour it over top of the chicken and broccoli on the side or you can add it to your chicken broccoli pasta. 
and it is so delicious. This was so perfect, so easy, and it can really be very inexpensive, especially if you're doing canned chicken, some frozen broccoli, and your favorite Alfredo sauce, you're gonna be in good shape. For this next one, we're making ranch Ritz chicken, and we're just gonna make our own chicken tenders in this case. So unfortunately, I did not get the co-creation process on camera. For some reason, my camera was not recording, but you wanna take as many chicken tenders as you like, or you can slice your chicken breasts into chicken tenders, like into um, long pieces like that. And then you just roll them in ranch dressing and then cover them in crushed up Ritz crackers. I actually just used like the Aldi brand, you can use whatever ranch you have and bake them at 375 degrees for about 20 minutes. So the process to cream them is super simple. Just crush up those crackers, you get your ranch. From start to finish, you're gonna look at about 30 minutes. It's delicious. Ranch and Ritz, have you ever had that before? I hadn't and I'm, I was shocked, I'm amazed. It's, it was so, so, so delicious. I absolutely loved it. I made up like a little sauce on the side because you can serve this with, what again, whatever you have in your fridge. So you can just do some more ranch for dipping or I did like, I tried to make like a play on a Chick-fil-A sauce because I didn't have any on hand and I just did like a little bit of mayonnaise, barbecue and honey mustard, but I did a lot more barbecue. So it was like kind of heavy on the barbecue. It was amazing. It was so good, so fun to dip and definitely a lot healthier than ordering like the takeout chicken tenders and just so so awesome this was inspired by some leftover pesto that i had from my chicken pasta pesto the other day i only had like a few teaspoons left in the bottom of my jar and i'm like what am i going to do with this chicken and this pesto and this recipe was perfect for this, I just used a little over a pound of chicken. We didn't really need much because you're gonna make a whole sandwich out of it. And you can usually get that on sale for $1.69, $1.99 a pound. So you wanna put a couple teaspoons of pesto over your chicken and then some slices of tomato. I happen to have a couple tomatoes on hand and I did look up all the prices at Walmart today for these things because these were mostly things that I already had in my closet and my cabinets. So, you know, make it your own, add what you want or what you don't want or what you have or what you don't have. But tomatoes are really cheap. Roma tomatoes are like 43 cents each. And then I'm adding a sprinkle of mozzarella cheese. You could also do like fresh mozzarella or cheddar if you have it or Parmesan. All of those things would be good. Really, whatever you have will work in this. You wanna bake this at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes. And because these are sliced thinly, they'll be perfectly cooked through. They've got that flavor from the pesto. You can get pesto for so cheap. I have bought it at the Dollar Tree before for $1.25 and it is so delicious. You can see that we serve this with just really leftover stuff we had. I have lettuce from the garden, so I made a little salad. I had some sweet potatoes in my freezer, so I just microwaved those and cooked them up. And then I had a leftover pasta salad from a different night. This next recipe is loosely called campfire rice. I'm using a stir fried rice package from Rice Aroni. I'm actually gonna use two of them, but did I really need to use two of them? Probably not. I thought that um, I thought that I would need them both, but it was actually plenty as it was. We're just gonna start by following the package instructions and cooking the rice. Once the rice is cooked, I'm adding in two cans of chicken. And I think this might be why it's called campfire rice because it's stuff that doesn't need to be refrigerated, right? So you're just starting with cans of rice and then I'm using some cooked frozen vegetables, but you can use canned mixed vegetables as well. Whatever you have on hand, if you just have like some corn and some peas, that's fine. If you have just some peas, that's fine. You know, whatever, whatever you have, go ahead and use that because this is just a simple add-in. And then it really ends up kind of being like a stir fried rice or a fried rice from like a Chinese restaurant. And it was really, really good. We ended up serving it with some of those egg rolls from the Dollar Tree, like the $1.25 vegetable spring rolls that are so, so good. So overall, this meal was so inexpensive. And I probably only needed to make about half of what I actually did make. So you could easily feed six to eight people with this recipe. There is plenty of rice. You have your protein, you have your veggies, and you serve that with those cheap egg rolls that are amazing. And you have a full on meal and everybody's happy. I want to 
thank you so much for watching today. Don't forget to get your free PDF downloaded down in the description box. Just click that link and you're gonna be all set. If you're looking for some more easy meals, go ahead and check out this next playlist. And the next time you're on YouTube, make sure you're watching Meals with Maria.